started. I'm, I'm Ted Miguel. I'm a professor of economics at UC Berkeley and a faculty director for the Berkeley Initiative for Transparency in the Social Sciences. We're delighted to welcome you to our ninth annual meeting and um, really just delighted that you're here and excited about just the large numbers of, of folks who have registered um, to take part in the meeting. Um, if you are interested in uh, checking out the slides and other materials from the meeting. I have the, the link here, the OSF link, um, so you can download those materials. We, we'd also love to keep the conversations going on our Slack channel, and you can see the, the link here, bitsannualmeeting.slack um, as well. If you are tweeting, you can see the bits Twitter handle on the bottom of the, the slide here, and we just ask you to use the hashtag bitsam9 to, again, mark our ninth annual meeting. So. Um, again, welcome to the meeting. Let me just start with a couple words. I know this has been a, a kind of crazy day for, for many of us here in the US and, and maybe those watching abroad because of all the political turmoil in Washington DC. And, and just to, to let you know that, that all of us are also feeling <laughs> pretty upset and, and rattled by, by what's going on, but we're gonna go ahead with the meeting and um, just, just wanna to, you know, push forward with our work, but we're, we're definitely open to uh, any thoughts or conversations throughout the event, um, uh, if fo folks want to want to discuss what's what's going on or if it's if it's impacting them in some way. So I just want to want to put it out there, um, but but we're going to move forward with with the event. Um, so what I want to do just take, is I'm going to take a few minutes to give you an overview of bits. Some of you are new to bits, uh, and this will give you a chance to um, learn more about some of our work. Others of you are familiar with BITS, but this will be a chance for you to catch up on some new activities uh, that we've been working on uh, this year. Uh, so let me just take a few minutes and then I'll, we'll transition into our first, uh, our first panel. So just a little bit of background on BITS uh, and our, our mission. Our, our goal is to improve the credibility of, of science with a focus on, on social science, although there's also uh, folks in, in biostats and medical uh, research also uh, that are affiliated with BITS. Um, we, we seek to promote research transparency, reproducibility, ethics, and research. And um, we are uh, uh, an initiative of the Center for Effective Global Action, SIGA, which is based here at the University of California, Berkeley. Uh, there's three components to uh, what we do are three sort of main pillars of, of what we do. One is to generate evidence. So BITS uh, for a while now has uh, funded and coordinated meta research. So research on the research process, uh, sometimes led by BITS uh, faculty and, and affiliates and staff and other times by the broader community that uh, participates in BITS events. The second pillar of what we do is increasing uh, access to open science education and training. And, and, and really, this training work has been a really core of our activity since the beginning. Uh, we uh, develop and share curricular resources, provide financial support for members of our network to uh, carry out training courses. Uh, we've developed online uh, course materials and lecture materials, and we deliver uh, in-person training, although, of course, over the last year, that hasn't been possible uh, in person. Finally, one of our major goals is to strengthen the scientific ecosystem to promote open science and research transparency. Uh, and we do this by, you know, in various ways, uh, by developing digital infrastructure, coordinating policy and protocols. So there really are a number of different activities. And I think what's pretty cool about today and tomorrow is you're going to get a sense of many different components of what BITS does and what the broader BITS community has been working on over the last year. So. Uh, just you know, along those lines to give you a flavor of what uh, we've been up to over the last year and mention some of the highlights. Um, <clears throat> let me just mention a few, few activities. One of the, the exciting developments over the last year uh, was the launch of the social science prediction platform. And you can see the link uh, here below. The goal of the prediction platform is to uh, gather and elicit uh, predictions about what sorts of effects, treatment effects, uh, impacts will be as observed in research studies. And uh, there's many uses of those predictions. First, it's really interesting to see what the research community thinks about certain research questions, what their priors are, what their beliefs are. Um, beyond that, it, it, you know, comparing priors to uh, estimated treatment effects can give us a sense about what we've learned and how we've updated. 
from new research. So there's really a, a lot of, uh, this is a very important activity and um, it's really taken off over the last year with over 2000 researchers and students providing predictions on the platform. Uh, 13 projects have now been registered. Six of those are currently open. So if you're interested in checking out the platform and maybe even registering your own predictions, uh, you, know, you, should, you should definitely uh, go ahead and do that. We have a panel later today with the principal investigators on the project, Stefano Della Vigna, Eva Vivald, Arun Advani, and Nick Otis. So definitely check out uh, that panel to learn more about the, the prediction platform. Um, a second uh, piece of digital infrastructure that BITS is working on is the social science reproduction platform, which is focused on uh, understanding and ultimately promoting um, the computational reproducibility of research in the social sciences. Um, this <coughs> activity uh, is really a, another crowdsourced activity where the research community can go in and carry out computational reprodu reproductions of existing papers, record those, share those with the community, uh, and understand not just maybe where papers fall short, but also how they can be improved in really a constructive way. So we're, we're really excited about this platform because we really hope, we think it really moves the research community forward towards you know, constructive work in promoting computational reproducibility. Um, <clears throat> there's an online platform, a guide, a curricular module for those who want to use this tool in classes uh, that are under development. The beta version is online. You can check that out uh, on the web at the link below. Tomorrow, we have a panel discussing progress on uh, ACRE, this uh, Advancing Computational Reproducibility Project, uh, with Lars Vilhuber and uh, BITS' own uh, Fernando Osas de la Guardia. So we're, we're really uh, excited for you guys to check that out, to learn more, and to get your feedback. Since we are in the beta version, uh, any feedback is just super useful for us right now as we, as we finalize the platform. Um, another activity, as I mentioned, that's core to BITS is our open science education and uh, training. This year, because of the pandemic, our um, training course, which we call RT2, Research Transparency and Reproducibility, Sorry, was I muted there for a second? Can you guys hear me now? Yeah, okay. we can hear I don't, you I don't now, know, I think. <laughs> I don't know what, uh, somebody muted me, I think. Um, so, uh, you know, we, we've had week-long trainings now for the last, I think, seven years. Uh, hundreds of students and postdocs and young scholars have received training uh, through the program. And, um, uh, you know, we're excited to have another training this summer. We're not sure exactly what the timing and the, the venue will look like. It really depends on how we deal with the pandemic. Um, but it may be at UC Riverside, that would be fantastic, or maybe some sort of virtual or hybrid training course. But if you're interested in these issues, we really encourage you to check out uh, past RT2 materials. A lot of them are online, videos, training materials, and to take part in a training course uh, yourself this, this year if, um, if you can and if you're interested. There is financial support uh, for students, uh, for some students to travel to these courses if they are in person. So please don't let that be a, an impediment to uh, participating. Um, great, let me, let me say a, a word about some of our other activities. As I mentioned, uh, BITS focuses on uh, training in, in open science, but also on promoting meta research. And to promote activities uh, globally in this area, we have what we call our Catalyst uh, program. The Catalyst program provides seed funding uh, for individuals who are advancing open science and research transparency in their own institution and their own research community. Uh, we, we were able to fund nine new Catalyst projects. So now over the last five years or so, there's just been scores of these, uh, of these projects. What's become so awesome about this network is just how global it is and how interdisciplinary it is. And I'm just gonna show you the, the kind of titles uh, and the names of some of the folks who are carrying out this work. Um, there, there's work on uh, advancing transparency and reproducibility in public health uh, carried out by uh, a scholar in Pakistan, uh, Ahwaz. There's work, uh, a training course on transparent, reproducible, and ethical research in Brazil. Um, uh, there's work in, uh, uh, in developing uh, training modules in Ethiopia. 
There's some meta research being carried out here uh, in Berkeley on uh, promoting research transparency and observational studies. Uh, so, you know, again, you can get a, a sense of just how global and, and just the different topics that our network are, are pushing on. Um, here are the other five that have recently been funded work in the, in the you know, the Netherlands on a student initiative for, for open science, um, a really cool initiative to promote transparency and equity in pre-doctoral research, um, work in open science in language research. So again, uh, you know, a research field that, that we're really excited to engage with at BITS, um, some uh, work by scholars in um, on uh, again uh, transparency tools and economics research, uh, and then finally an initiative to promote open science and agricultural economics. So uh, you know you can you can really get a sense of the uh, the range of work that our network is is pushing on, and it's, it's just a very exciting time right now in the research transparency space. Um, the uh, another area where, where BITS has been uh, pushing forward over the last year is promoting access to evidence and open access to evidence. The Meta Archive um, preprint service is managed by BITS. It's an interdisciplinary archive of research on meta science and on research transparency. The numbers of preprints, which are also called working papers in, in some fields, like my own field of economics, uh, the numbers of preprints have really um, taken off over the last year. There's over 150 now on the um, uh, in Meta Archive. So please check those out to get a sense of like the latest, greatest work in this area. Um, another neat initiative is uh, what's called PCI Meta Research, which is a, a community of scholars who will provide feedback on preprints. So um, you can access that service um, yourself. You can post on Meta Archive if you have a working paper or preprint in this space and then get feedback from PCI Meta Research. So really a lot of new cool initiatives are, are, are coming up. Um, I'd also like to just note for, for those who are participating, just how much, how dynamic um, the social sciences and other research fields are right now regarding open science, um, how much change continues to happen and, and just really how exciting a time it continues to be. Uh, so for instance, the in my own field of economics, uh, a study registry was launched about seven or eight years ago. And uh, the numbers of studies now that are posted on the registry, are, there's over 4,000 studies posted in total. And just the numbers posted in each quarter, that's the black line there on the left, just continues to go up. So there's just been this exponential growth in uh, participation in the study registry. And of course, studies that are, that are on the registry, that are pre-registered, that have pre-analysis plans, et cetera, are just so much more visible to the scientific community uh, and help us in the economics community deal with problems like publication bias, hopefully. Um, beyond registration, there's been a growth in preprints. You can see bio archive you know, on the right. And again, just the numbers of abstract views and downloads and papers loaded is just you know, skyrocketing with, with tens of thousands of papers now uh, posted there. So um, you know, I think overall this, this remains a, a dynamic and exciting period. And that's really why these annual meetings I think are so important and something that, I, that all of us look forward to so much. Um, given how quickly things are changing, this is a chance for all of us to get up to speed on the latest things that are happening. And, and one of the things I, I really have grown to appreciate about BITS over time is because we're an interdisciplinary network, you can get a, a good snapshot of what's going on across fields uh, and maybe bring some of that learning back into your own discipline. Uh, okay, so a few more things before we, we launch with our first panel, which, which I'm really excited about. I just want to briefly mention the code of conduct. You can see the full code of conduct if you want to read it at the link below, but BITS is, is dedicated uh, to diversity, to equity, to inclusion, to free expression of ideas. We want speakers to participate in a respectful way and try to understand the impact their words can have uh, on others. Uh, we also believe all participants have the right to a harassment-free experience, regardless of their background. Uh, people should be treated with respect, and we, we won't tolerate har harassment at all uh, in, the, in, in any sessions, in any breakout rooms. Uh, and if you do feel that uh, participants are violating these rules and these guidelines, please do reach out to BITS uh, staff uh, right away. Uh, on, on a private Zoom chat, on Slack, on, you know, via email, uh, just to let us know. So we can make sure that this is a, the kind of event that, that we can 
uh, you know, be proud of and, and that, that lives up to our values. Um, okay, so the meeting program, just to give you a little bit of an overview and then we'll, we'll transition to the panel. I, I've just given my, my remarks. We're gonna transition to the panel in a few minutes on uh, research transparency, challenges and opportunities in COVID-19 research, which is just such an important uh, body of research that's emerged <laughs> in the past months. Uh, we're, we're, we're super excited about the panel that's, that's come together for this, uh, for this uh, um, the group that's come together for this panel. Following the keynote panel, we will have a break with side room discussion. So we're gonna try to facilitate um, uh, side room discussion so you get to meet other participants, folks from other fields, and really create some of that conference cross-fertilization experience that I think all of us really miss during the pandemic. But uh, in past conferences, I think we found that these side rooms can be pretty effective in getting people to know each other. Um, we'll then move on to parallel sessions for an hour and a half. Um, and there's gonna be two different rooms, one session of multiple papers on evidence synthesis and meta-analysis, another room on transparent reporting issues. So again, really core issues in, um, in open science. There'll again be a short break at that point before we transition to our second panel on the prediction of the social science prediction platform that I mentioned uh, before, and then uh, a, a series of lightning talks to close out today's session. Okay, so that's the, the, the layout for uh, today. Tomorrow's um, sort of layout will be kind of similar uh, with different content. So the keynote panel tomorrow, which I'll be moderating is on open science for a more democratic and inclusive scholarship. Again, we have a really interesting group of scholars with different perspectives on these issues. And I'm super excited to, uh, to, to dive into these issues and really work through the link between open science and um, you know, equality and, and issues of inclusion more broadly. Uh, we'll then have a break and then move into parallel sessions. Uh, one parallel session on democratizing science, sort of building on some of the themes from the panel, and another one on uh, with a series of papers on publication bias. So again, really core core issue in the open science space. At that point, we'll move it back into the side room discussion, so you can meet more participants before we um, move into the panel on computational reproducibility and the platform that we at Bits have been developing with partners uh, in this area. Um, and then we'll close out with lightning talks, again, a series of lightning talks, and then a closing discussion that Katie uh, and I will, uh, will lead, and then uh, some final breakout group discussions to sort of digest what's been going on uh, during the conference. Okay, so there's a lot on the agenda, a lot of content. Uh, I know we all wish we could be together in person, but uh, again, we found that these virtual conferences can work pretty well, and we do hope that some of the breakout and side room discussions can lead to some new partnerships and lead, lead you to meet new people that could be, that could be useful for you.